Father, we thank you that we can be here. Um, thank you for giving us hearts that care enough about your word to through the tiredness and through the weariness and the fatigue we come out for bible teaching and lord god it just shows the caliber of the people here lord so we thank you for that and um would you pray that you can um bring something out of this tonight because i don't know how to in jesus name amen. <laughs> so basically we've we've gone past uh, saul's uh, conversion and then he, he get, gets his sight back and he's preaching already this is chapter 9 of acts and then he, 32 uh, peter uh it goes to Peter. It goes back to Peter, I should say, because it never really... It starts to be coming all about Paul in a while, but it goes back to Peter in verse 32, and he's in a place called... I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to tell you what happens for the next few chapters, and then you can kind of... I'll, I'll tell you why it happens this way and why Luke's recording it this way. So Peter is in um, Lydda, Lydda, and um, there found a man named uh, Aeneas, a paralytic who'd been bedridden for eight years and here's Peter said to him Jesus Christ heals you get up and tidy up your mat immediately Aeneas gets up so the paralytic gets healed the point being God's still doing miracles it wasn't just in Jerusalem it wasn't centralised to a place so some people say oh that's what happened in Jerusalem to get the church started well hold on a minute individuals are going off and doing miracles right so just that's just the facts <laughs> what we're seeing here um, I will read this in Joppa 36 in Joppa there was a disciple named Tabitha, which when translated is Dorcas, who was always doing good and helping the poor. About that time she became sick and died, and her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. Lydia was near Joppa. So when the disciples heard that Peter was in Lydda, Lydda, they sent two men to him and urged him, please come at once. Peter went with them, and when he had arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. All the widows stood around him, crying and showing him robes and the other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with them. Peter sent them all out of the room. He got down on his knees and prayed. Turning towards the dead woman, he said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes and seeing Peter, she sat up. He took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Then he called all the believers, the widows, and presented her to them alive. This became known all over Joppa, and many people believed in the Lord. Peter stayed in Joppa for some time with a tanner named Simon. Now, the, this is raising the dead. Oh my goodness, right? people raise the dead. And... Um, and again, I reiterate what I've been saying for a few weeks now. I'm jealous of that day, you know, that that, that that was happening. I don't mind if someone down the road raises the dead. I don't mind if it's, you know, happens not in our, our group or, you know, some other denomination or something. But I just want to see God move in that way. You know, show his hand in this day. Show his... Um, his He's with us. He's, he's doing something. There's still this stuff going on. But it's not happened for so long. There's not been healings amongst us for so long. There's people faking it. There's people trying to, you know, manufacture this stuff. But um, I, you know, I, I want us all to get like a, um, a righteous hunger to see God move in the miraculous. You know, it's not. We're not going over to them new, new, um, apostolic. Uh, what's it called? New apostolic reformation people who think that that should be happening all the time. It's a his. Uh, request it's at his bidding it's at his um you know timing and location and will so um so it's a difficult one because we've got sickness in the room we've got problems in the room which have been there for a long time and they make people feel lousy and pain and suffering and um you know so it's a big deal this is like huge um and my heart, and I, I, I can't put this on you, you can, you can only generate it yourself, is to, is to have a, not a scream at God and say, where's the healers? It's not fair, I don't feel like that. I just feel like, God, what is it? Where can we, where, how can we position ourselves in this day to be able to be vessels through which you can work in that way? And we've, we've you know, we've said it a lot, um, probably even said it last week, you know, God knows that if, you, if he does it so much, people start chasing a Rolex or building a church where it happened or getting your own facility and all that stuff and it's not really glorifying to him mm. you know so I don't know what help us to be people who you know we will not go after them things and try and be a legend in your own lunchtime you know when you know it was Jesus that did it anyway because you know when you see Peter here he's just healed somebody a paralytic goes, goes uh, down the road and raises someone from the dead I'm like what? <laughs> Ten. At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion in what was known as the Italian Regiment. 
So he was he was walking backwards. Anyway, he and all his family were devout and God fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. One day, at about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, "Cornelius!" Cornelius stared at him in fear. "What is it, Lord?" he asked. Uh, the angel answered, "Your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. Now send men to Joppa to bring back a man named Simon, who is called Peter." He is staying with Simon, the tanner, whose house is by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him had gone, Cornelius and two of his servants and a devout soldier, who was one of his attendants, he told them everything that had happened and uh, sent them to Joppa. Now, interestingly in this one, Cornelius is described as being gifts, you know, he's, he's generous. And also, Dorcas is also um, always doing good and helping the poor. Now, can we say from this two things next to each other here in chapter 9 and 10? That there's a pattern here about the doing good and the generosity and giving to the poor and God's miraculous. Because it says it twice there. It's interesting, isn't it? How that's the description of somebody who's going to be blessed to see an angel, be chosen to, you know, because be, it'd be amazing to see, see an angel, wouldn't it? Because you'd be like, oh, it's an angel. You know that. But, um, but also, you know, being the one who is raised from the dead. You know, God's miraculous is all over it. And the, the, the commonality here. It's obviously Peter sent to do it. But secondly, they were people who were generous and gave to the poor. Now, that's not I'm not saying empty your bank account and give it to all the poor. And all that. I'm, not, I'm just saying, you know, I think it's the heart of wanting to see the unfortunate and those who are dragged down in society helped and aided. Now, whether we can put our hand in our pocket and do that is, is a matter between you and the Holy Spirit. Okay? But the point is, is that you know the heart that cares about um, um, a rotten society and those who are in the rotten society I sent a picture of and I thought it was brilliant art to some of you I don't know whether you all saw it, did I send it to on church? the ones with the, and it's split in half with the, one of them was a guy with a guitar and a soldier with a gun it's just heartbreaking and I'll, I'll, I'll just take a look at them photographs and it shows that while we're in our western context and we can't get out of that we can't just say oh let's smash our houses up and you know you wouldn't do that you don't you live in a system that god's put you in but then there's another part of the world that's right now dodging bullets literally uh, there's bodies in the street and we're, we're talking italy right because of viruses and stuff and the coronavirus and um you know that could come to us it's just flu guys for you guys for all those in here we were pretty able-bodied and you know healthy it's flu yeah, you just get sick, you know. So, but if if it comes in here, there's three cases in WA, and one of them's dead, I think. It's not very resistant to heat, so 20 degrees upwards, it starts dying. That's really? That's why we've got a natural resistance to it because of our climate. But we don't do it to them. So. Oh. Well, anyway, someone told me, Tim told me tonight that they've stopped all flights to South Asia, Qantas. Italy has been struck down with quite a lockdown now as well, haven't they? Yeah. So, so you know, these things are happening to other people, but. You know, I want to get more. Um, I, I'm really bothered about what goes on, you know, in society and all that. Um, um, I'm bothered enough to do anything about, you know, well, kind of work in that sector, you know, and and all that. And I'm really honoured and privileged to do so. But um, you know, I want to see these things re reoccur. I want you to be baptising people and maybe raising people from the dead, healing definitely, you know, and, and let's seek God after that stuff. Because for years. Um, I've been more standoffish and waiting for, you know, I always say this phrase, you know, angels to be river dancing on me doing to, <laughs> to do anything, you know, like, oh, and I'd need, like, perhaps an angel in front of me to say something to actually do it, because I've got lax of laid back, you know what I mean? But the, the error would then to, be to say, lean in and start to go on the, you know, the train in the morning laying hands on people and all like that. You know, especially in these days, especially hand sanitised, you get your head punched in, you know, and you definitely would. So that you, so it's not that either. But it's kind of having a heightened sense of God. I'm available because if you if you want to speak to me or through me to to create you know to, for there to be a miracle, then I'm available for that. Mm -hmm. And um, you know if you do get that urge to kind of speak you know that, that word of knowledge or l pray for somebody's sickness, then that's, I'd say don't resist it because you know you. you even if you do pray for somebody who don't get healed, they're not going to turn around and go, oh yeah, there you go, there's no God. Mm -hmm. They're not going to do that. They're going to go, thanks for praying for me. Mm -hmm. You've got a heart of compassion towards me. I love it. And just because it didn't work the way you wanted it to do, 
the rare, it's rare someone would turn around and go, ah, that's just rubbing. They would have said it before. No, you're not praying for me. There is no God. Do you know what I mean? So don't be, don't be fearful that you're proving that there isn't a God by a failed healing. You know what I mean? So, because they, they wouldn't let you pray for me if they didn't have a hint of this, this, there could be something in this. That makes sense? So, the next one is Peter's vision. It says in my NIV Bible. Not that that's my only Bible of choice. Now this is important because it spans why, where God's going to take the, their Jewish mindset and trash it. Listen to this. About noon the following day as they were on their journey, the, um, so sorry, they were going to, they told them everything that happened to them in Jordan. And About noon the following day as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted to, something to eat. And while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven opened and something like a large sheep being led down to earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals as well as reptiles of the earth and birds of the air. Then a voice told him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him in a second time, Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times and immediately the sheep was taken back to heaven. Now, I'll carry on because it will become clear why this is on. Um, while Peter was wondering about the meaning of the vision, the men sent by Cornelius found out where Simon's house was and stopped at the gate. They called out, asking Simon who was known as Peter and staying, with, and staying there. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the spirit said to him, Simon, three men are looking for you, so get up and go downstairs. Do not hesitate to go with them, for I have sent them. Peter went down and said to the men, I am the one you're looking for. Why have you come? The men replied, We have come from Cornelius the centurion, he is a righteous and God fearing man, who is respected by all the Jewish people. A holy angel told him to, to have you come to this house so that he could hear what you have to say. Then Peter invited them into the house of his guests. The next day, Peter started out with them, and some of the brothers from Joppa went along. The following day, he arrived at Caesarea. Um, Cornelius was expecting them, and he had called together his relatives and close friends. As Peter entered the house, Cornelius met him and fell at his feet in reverence. But Peter made him get up. Stand up, he said. I am only a man myself. Talking with him, Peter went inside and found a large gathering of people. He said to them, You are well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate with a Gentile or visit him. So the Jews couldn't really hang out with Gentiles. But this is all going to change. Uh, but God has shown me that I, sh that I should not call any man impure or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without raising any objection. May I ask why you sent, why you sent for me? Cornelius answered, four days ago I was in my house. So he retells the, the story of the angel, okay? Mm -hmm. Down to verse 34. Um, now, this is another sermon, similar to the one what he did before, but a little bit condensed. But do you remember that time when, a few times, now whenever they open the mouth, they always say, and you hung him on a tree, or he was hung on a tree. Well, look at verse um, 38, he gets it in. How God anointed Jesus. Oh, no, it's not that one. It's, it's 39. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree. <laughs> so like, there's like a, they're always coming back to that thing. This is what happened. They killed him. They killed him. Um, and then he goes, um, so look, chapter 11, we're going to miss that whole thing. You can read it yourself. It's a re it's, it's the, he's preaching the gospel. Right? And we haven't, there's nothing in there really what we haven't really looked at. Um, the, the apostles and the brothers throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jeru Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him. <laughs> Never had that. And, sa and said, you went into the house of uncircumcised men and ate with them. Peter began and explained everything to them. And he explains it again um, to these people. Um, so then he, he also tells about the three men who, who, who come with him. And then right down to where it says, uh, what is it, 11.19. Um, the Holy Spirit came on them, and he came on us in the beginning. Then I remember what the Lord had said, John baptised with water, but you were baptised with the Holy Spirit. So if God gave them the same gift as he gave us, who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to think that I could oppose God? When they heard this, they had no further objections, and praised God, saying, So then, and this is the thing, God has granted even the Gentiles repentance unto life. So there's a little bit of a dig there, a little bit of prejudice. Even the Gentiles even those low kind of, you know, people. So the Jews had this snobbery about the, the whole thing. We've been the shows and we've been the show. And it became their downfall. Because the, when it came to it, and Jesus came meek and mild and stood in front of them, they're like, we've been chosen, we've been chosen. And I'm like, yeah, I'm the one who chose you. But they rejected him. 
you know, because that pride yeah. couldn't be yeah. penetrated by anything. Yeah. So this whole thing here is how we get from the Jews, all the disciples Jews, right? And it being a Jewish thing, and now it's actually gone into the Gentiles. So that so Jews and Gentiles have all, by the grace of God, able to be saved um, by um, Jesus. You know, so and that's really we can go further if you want. It's a little bit of a short one tonight. But um, any questions? Because this is really important, because that it, that, it's now all oh, right. The, the, it, God has to break into a mindset through a vision of foods that are clean. And, and just a little bit of a slap around the head for evolutionists. On that table, there was birds and reptiles. Why is that important? There was no midway between them. Because they believed dinosaurs evolved into birds. Yeah. And, and birds and reptiles were on that on that thing. It's just just something you pick out if, you, if it's if you've got it in your mind that people argue. Even Christians, some Christians believe in evolution. So theistic. Evolution. Well, you know, you know, when you get theistic evolution, people who think that God created through evolution, He was the force that that made it all happen. And the people do actually believe that. They're very convicted yeah. by it. Um, well, when He produced this table, it had birds and reptiles on it. You know, it had things. And they normally wouldn't have been together yeah. if that's evolution. Yeah. From from that's creation. But they didn't have like any missing link or, you know, there's no... So why would God only give certain... It's just rubbish. Evolution's completely rubbish. So. Adaptation is completely valid with animals adapting to their surroundings. It's completely valid with evolution through millions of years. There's so many causes to find. Yeah, that's right. So there we go. That's that's a lot of stuff to get through tonight, and um, you can go away and read that yourself. It's not difficult. Acts is not difficult at all. It's just like a story of what goes on from there. But we wanted to do the early church part of it because it was the formation of what God was going to do, and we all we did this under the banner of you know Jesus. Luke was Jesus did when what he did when he was on the earth, and then what Jesus did after. And the old tension will always be: is it the acts of the Holy Spirit or the acts of the apostles? Which is it? Well, it's both, isn't it? Because the Holy Spirit works through the people to do the healings, raising the dead. There's all kinds of stuff coming up as well. Um, but like I said, we can we can leave it there um, and then go on to something else or we can continue with Acts and then we've got it. But it will take a few weeks to get through all the historical narrative. What do you want to do? Continue with Acts? What? You know what I was there? I don't know what you said. Oh, um, that do you yesterday? Do like a condensed sort of. Like that? Yeah. 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 Like that? Yeah. Do, do like really, really condensed what exactly is going on? Yeah, is going on. Oh, do, shall we do that then? Yeah. Key points? Yeah, yeah. yeah. key yeah. points. Yeah. And then. Or you can get more, yeah, if they want to read more. Or and then if we, if, if, if you've got questions, we don't like the obvious or, mm. like, or anywhere that could be. I didn't want to get. All right, I'll do that then. What I'll do is I'll focus on the fact that where where Paul, what Paul was doing, because because Luke read some of the he read Galatians one and two Thessalonians one and two Corinthians before he, he wrote Acts. So he's, the historical narrative starts at fifteen, chapter fifteen, and that's Galatians. So he puts more into the. So I might just bring Galatians in, put it next to it, and go. Oh, wow. This is this is what's happening here. And, Where's Paul when he wrote it? Yeah. You know. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Let's pray. Well, I'll pray anyway. Father, we thank you for that short burst of. I hope it was dynamic for someone. But um, we just thank you for all your graces, Lord, and the fact that you do miraculous things on earth. And um, we pray, Lord, for um, the biggest miracle to happen to our, our self and our families and our friends, uh, the miracle of salvation, Lord, the the um, the um, the, the um, adrenaline shot of, of your glory, Lord, to, to people. Help us to be mindful of that, Lord God. And um, we do want that more than anything. We're not particularly um, keen on anyone being lost in this world, Lord God. We don't want that to be the case. And give us the ability to gossip the gospel when we need to do and be able to uh, have the boldness to step out and the courage to um, pray for people um, when led. In Jesus' name, amen.